because they say that people who are like attacking don't play the same rules from people who mm -hmm. are being attacked. Yeah. How can they both play on the same ground by the same rules? What does the people that's, that are being attacked need to do to play on the same ground? Well, by, by definition, they're not playing on the same grounds. And it's something that defenders need to understand. Defenders are often practicing and preparing for an attack by working with standard testing. They need to stop that and start thinking about actual attackers and realizing that they're not bound to rules or regulations. Once they do that, the, the way to level the playing field and try to play on the same ground, it, it's never going to happen. It's not, never it's going to be the same ground happen. because defenders have to abide by rules. Okay. They cannot break the law. But there are ways where defenders can be more proactive and anticipate the attackers and engage the attackers before actually getting attacked. I actually talked about this last year in a security zone where I talked about proactive defense. So stepping out of the defense boundaries more towards the attackers and doing more research and intelligence on, on your attackers. Like stepping to, out of the comfort zone. Yes, right? exactly, exactly. And just the way that attackers are learning the organizations that they're going to attack, defenders need to learn who they're defending from. By doing that, they can extend those parameters from being just technical parameters to being more logical ones. So they can step out, be more proactive, learn their, their attackers, and, and get involved in, a, in an earlier stage of the game. And I think that, that Chris put it nicely today. That security is not a on-off thing. It's about time. So by stepping out of that defensive posture and waiting for someone to attack you, you're buying time. So you're engaging the attackers earlier on in the game, and you're buying time in which your security is better. Okay. Um, you also said earlier that there's like this big difference between all the like departments in a company. Mm -hmm. So what would be like the strategy to have all the departments work like together towards finding the same solution? It's from, from my perspective, it's better communication to begin with. Um, it's about redefining the roles and not confining them to specific elements. It's, it's, it's breaking out of that scope. The same way that when, when the, if, how a company is being run, okay? Mm -hmm. You have the board, you have the CEO, the CFO, all the executives sitting together talking about strategy. That's how a company runs. It's not like the, the CFO is taking care of financials just by itself and not telling anyone what he's doing and not asking what other departments are doing. They're all sitting together and figuring out how to run this company. The, the same approach should be taken from a security perspective as well. Um, so security should be an integral part of running the business. So a C CISO should sit on the same table as the CIO, the CFO, CEO, all the executives sit at and be involved across the board and not just focus on technology, not, not be bound to the CIO, but take an executive role in an organizational perspective that goes across the board and works with all the departments and gets and just work together. And like work all together as a whole. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's otherwise if, if you start limiting there are gonna be gaps. When once you start siloing uh, there are gonna be gaps between those silos, between those organizations mm -hmm. inside. And those gaps basically allow hackers uh, to, to get in. To get in. All right. CSO basically depends on CIOs. Is this 
usual? It's this common, or this is just a particular case that it's, happens here? Or is no, it, it, it happens in a lot of places where the CISO is, is reported to the CIO. Yes, um, I think that you know, it, it can work if the definitions are correct and the CISO is giving mandate over the entire organization. But if the CIO only focuses on the, the information technology part and not information as a whole, mm -hmm. you get back into the same problem of dealing with technology. So you're limiting your security posture to just the technology just element and not the entire organization. Final recommendation in order like to establish politics and strategies for companies to develop as a whole, as you were saying, and not mm -hmm. just focus on specific subjects? I would say take a good look at yourself and, and understand where you are. That's the first step in understanding how secure you are. A lot of times companies uh, fool themselves by, by taking a biased look by using, you know, taking the easy, easy way out and passing a test. When you pass a test and, and you get like, all right, you're, you're okay, you're in, in my book, by definition, you have a problem because you don't know what you need to fix. You don't know what you, what you need to get better at. You think you're okay. The, the challenge that I face, and, and I think a lot of companies face, is understanding that security is never going to be okay. And you always have to fill the gaps. It's a, it's a moving target. Um, you know, iOS 7 came out yesterday, a couple of days ago. There's a problem now. You can, you can get past the, the lock screen. And people don't realize that. Um, it's, it's, it's really about changing the state of mind to understanding that I'm always going to be in constant development, in constant change and making sure that I focus on the gaps which will always exist and it's okay. And understanding that security is not a, as I said before, an on-off solution, an on-off situation, it's always a spectrum. Mm -hmm. So it's about choosing where I want to be in the spectrum and understanding where I am right now and closing that gap and okay. constantly doing that that math so now I close the gap a little bit over here now I don't want to be here anymore I want to be a little better okay. so, so I have a bigger gap. gap to close it's, it's going to contain different elements so the previous gap had some technical elements and some legal elements the new gap has social elements, I need more awareness, and physical elements because my offices aren't that secure. So it's always about adjusting those two checkpoints or, or, or points on the spectrum in terms of where I want to be and where I am. And understanding that that gap will always exist, which is okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it's not good that I'm gonna reach here and that, that's it, that's my it. job is done. It's always going to change because the attackers change, the, the attacks change, my organization changes. I have new employees, I have old employees that left the company, I have new information, I have new lines of business, I'm working with partners, suppliers, clients, and it's, it's a very dynamic world. So I always have to adapt and anticipate and prepare for all of that. And once you really get that understanding, that's the first step. That's, that's really when you, you start seeing organizations take a better security posture across the board. That, that would be my, my best recommendation in terms of what do I need to do, it, it's, it's this. Okay. I think, I think that this pretty much covered everything. It's a, again, the, the main game changer is, is the change of perspective. It's understanding that you're, you're dealing with actual adversaries that don't play by the rules. It is understanding that the security thing is, is not about saying, done, okay, I, I did this, I did that, I did that. It's about creating more work for yourself 
by getting more involved in the business. And then I, I, I really think we covered all of that. So it's, it's good. Okay.